Today, I want to talk about specifically entrepreneurship and sexual energy. And this is something that really became apparent to me. Um, really, when I started, um, when I started uh, working with my sexual energy, I mean, I kind of started, well, I had my own business from when I was like 17 years old or so, from like pretty much when I first moved out of home, I figured out how to start making my own money. Um, but to get a business that's like where you love what you're doing, where you're earning money, where it's like aligned with your soul, where everything's just feeling so perfect. Hang on, let me just change the angle here. It's a different thing, you know, than just making money. And so, yeah, I want to talk about like, what is the relationship between sexual energy and making money and of course we can talk about like entrepreneurship we can talk about um how to amplify everything with sexual energy and yeah okay on a certain level that works you know i often see people writing things about going oh just have an orgasm and think about money well that's all well and good because an orgasm will amplify it's true orgasms amplify things yeah however um what you may be amplifying isn't necessarily what you're sitting there and consciously thinking that you want. You can easily end up amplifying all your underlying beliefs and so on and so forth, you know. Um, and we as humans, you know, we can say like human beings, we grow up and we have our natural programming. And then we have like programming that's basically put onto us by society and very many of us now if you look at it's interesting if you take three people right one an upper class person a middle class person and a working class person and you put them all together in a room and you um you you ask them about a problem or you give them a problem you can pretty much guarantee that each person is going to solve it differently and if you then change that, that upper class person for a different upper class person, middle class person for a different middle class person, lower class person for another lower class person, you'll probably find they do solve um, the problem in a similar way. Now, I mean, my business coach, he says this thing, he says, rich people invest, poor people save, right? Um, and it's definitely like a interesting thought when we think okay you know how we think oh let me save let me kind of hoard this little bit of money and you know what are we doing when we're doing that now there's no better investment well the i think the two best ways we can invest is one of all first of all invest in ourselves and second of all invest in a business you know i believe in particular every woman needs to have her own business and I mean, it literally breaks my heart when I see women out there, you know, no money, complaining about this and that, or even worse than that. I mean, I was literally the other day watching this documentary about Bra Brazilian butt lifts, right? And it was talking about this woman who died from a, getting a Brazilian butt lift, which is they inject some stuff into your ass, yeah, and you can pay up to $15,000, or if you get it done in a dodgy clinic, it's just five thousand dollars right to get some fat injected into your ass here but you can die from it and this is what happened and this woman died from it and it turned out the woman was a waitress and she's literally saved her money from waitressing to spend to invest in this five grand in herself which kind of like kills her you know and then it, it was interviewing some of her friends it was like all these waitresses they were all like you know saving and getting these butt jobs yeah or or whatever else cosmetic i mean and now it's so common women spending money on all kinds of aesthetic stuff and they view that as investing in themselves i suppose because they see it as a way like you know ultimately like a way to manipulate men to buy things for them and get things for them right you know whereas in the past i think not even that long ago we were a bit more on the thatcherite model where at getting the business for ourselves you know, was the idea of, of, of feminism or, or investing in self or whatever, you know. But what I found really, really interested in that, you know, uh, interesting about that is the fact that these people are basically on minimum wage and yet they're getting together these thousands of dollars to have this like crazy thing done to their bodies. Yeah, but the fact that they've been convinced by watching Instagram and hearing this and that and so on and so forth 
they, they're convinced that they need this thing in order to do better in life or whatever they think are going to be the benefits. I'm not quite sure, you know, and the fact is they decide on that and they go and get it right. That's yeah, that I find really, really interesting. And it kind of made me think of a certain aspect of my character and my personality that I had since being quite young, which was I would I always had this thing. I, I decided if I wanted something, I was going to go for it and I was going to get it. Um, now, I will say, like, I hung out with a lot of males, like as a child stroke young adult. And I think that I picked up that attitude from males because um, I noticed, well, there's a lot of men that don't think that way as well. But I think it was those particular males I was hanging out with that I got this certain attitude from. Um, but a lot of females are just very much, I mean, I was talking recently with this woman that had, uh, was talking about buying literally a bottle of supplements for $20, yeah, for some, uh, something to do with her, her womb health or something like that. And she's going, oh, I want to get these supplements, but I don't have the money to get it. And you're like, hang on a minute. Yeah. You're a full grown woman and you don't have $20, you know, to, to buy this bottle of supplements and it, most people go, oh, you know, it's someone's, they're the victim of circumstances and so on and so forth. And the thing is, you know, when you look at, you know, the thing is, it's, it doesn't really work like that. Because look, look at, look at drug addicts, some drug, drug addicts, are, they're supposedly at the bottom of society and yet they're getting 200, 300 pounds plus a day. Somehow they're getting it right to spend on their drugs, you know, and to get this money for ourselves, it requires like, you know, even if we're just talking about this $20, it requires a kind of like a push and a drive within ourselves that we're like, actually, I want this for myself and I deserve it. And then we get it. We just do, you know, but when we look at sexual energy and I know I've talked a lot about how does sexual transmutation work. I don't want to keep repeating things I've said before, but what I want to specifically talk about is the liver, the role of the liver as relates to sexual energy and the way that activates our vision and actually activates us as a guide to create a soul aligned business, which ultimately it comes from the heart and it comes from having our hearts open and activated when we can actually start creating this thing that we really dream. Um, I just want to ask if you're watching, have you heard of the Overton window? If you've heard of the Overton window, give me a two. If you know what it is, give me a two. If you don't know what it is, give me a one, please. Let me see if I've got the. Um, ah. Hey, yeah, okay, I can see the chat now. Do you know what the Overton window is? Uh, give me a two if you know what it is. Give me a one. If you do not, uh, because this is really important coming up in what I said. Okay. So I'm going to presume everybody knows what the Overton window is then if nobody's said anything, right? Okay. So people don't know what the Overton window is. Okay. 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 Right. Cool. Okay. So, um, Right. There's a few different ways to describe it. You know, there's a few different ways to describe it, but in this context, it's this here. Imagine you come from a working class family, right? Your dad grew, raised your family of seven kids on minimum wage. And, you know, you were always like, you know, fighting over the last sausage at the dinner table. There was always just enough to cover you on the week, but not really more, you know? Okay. And you kind of grow up, right? You go to school and so on, right? And maybe you get a job, right, uh, in, let's say you get a job in, in Tesco's and then suddenly you get offered a job as the manager of Tesco's. And you might actually start freaking out, right, and being like, yeah, but my family were like working classes and we were never in a managerial position. How can I go into this position? How can I take this increase of wages? What will I do with the money? You know, all this kind of stuff, st stuff comes up for people, right? And, and Maybe that's an example that's really obvious, but I'm sure that all of you can think about examples where you actually, and we all do this. I do it. Everybody does this. We lie to ourselves and we self-sabotage ourselves. You know, 
we get opportunities. We are constantly, constantly, constantly getting opportunities. But when the opportunities come, we've been programmed to bring, think of excuses. You know, what if I'm the manager? You know, going on in this kind of what if I become the manager and all the people at the, at the pub start taking the piss at me because I'm middle class now, you know? Um, so many different things, right? Do you get what I'm saying? When we start expanding beyond, or say you've, you've been used to get, taking in a certain wage, yeah, and suddenly your wage starts increasing, or maybe imagine you're a massage therapist and you start increasing your price, yeah, and suddenly you're like, oh my God, yeah, I put it up by $5, yeah. Ugh. Or maybe you're a coach, right? You know, and this is what most people coach coaches, tell coaches to do. They're like, put up your price, put up your price, right? Because for a few reasons, for yourself and also for the the person actually gets more out of the process of kind of paying for something, you know, and it can even be like, say you're used to always going to a restaurant and paying $10 for your meal or $20 for your meal, and then you're going for a $50 meal. And it's like, you're changing the Overton window. You're shifting and you're shifting your beliefs around your self-worth. You're shifting your beliefs around your money. And many, many people, and I even think that this was going on with the lady I mentioned earlier, that she actually thought, thinks and thought that, you know, if she invests in herself and actually spend this $20 on this bottle of supplements, right, that it, it was actually to be too much for her to like invest in herself in this way. So when we don't have this like mindset towards investing in ourselves, because bear in mind, when we create a business, it's us at the center of the business. And the way that our energy is, is what we're putting out into that business. If we're not doing like our daily meditation, we're not working on ourselves, we're not taking care of ourselves, we're not taking care of our energy, what happens is we're just putting bad energy out to the people that work for us, we're putting bad energy out into what's going on, you know, within the business, and it's gonna obviously have a knock-on effect. I mean, I was talking to someone not long ago that was, saying about you know that they that they have a, a job they have a business where they could make huge amounts more than they're making now but they're constantly limiting themselves and it's almost like they're constantly creating these negative beliefs around themselves and it was really interesting for me to watch it because of course we all do this we also all sometimes create these negative beliefs around ourselves you know that that limit us but he was doing it in such an extreme way it was quite cool to talk because it was really giving me an insight of like wow yeah it's like when we start creating a belief you know we want to see everything that's gonna back up that belief right so if i believe all men are horrible abusive things yeah i'm literally gonna pick out loads of horrible abusive men to put around me because then I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm right. You see, that guy just hit me. The other one tried to rape me. I told you, I told you, oh, guys, we're awful bastards, you know. And that's my ego's getting fed and my ego's being boosted, right? You know, I mean, another thing my business coach says, which I set, think is definitely, definitely true, is that when you get a soul aligned business, right? And of course, like business has a bad reputation, right? Because people think, oh, you're exploiting other people and so on and so forth. I mean, it's such a reverse way of thinking because actually the more people that are creating small businesses, the more the economy is working well and the more that everybody is benefiting from it, you know? But when, when, we, um, when we start creating our own solar aligned business, it's almost like all these little false beliefs and blockages and traumas and everything that we've got in the way unless we start clearing them out constantly on a daily basis, you know, they're going to be sabotaging what we're doing. The insecurities are going to come up. We're not going to do the work we need to do and we're not going to go far, right? Now, a huge part of this is there's an emotion, right? Yeah, that is really, really key to this. That gives us a lot of power. I want to know, guys, can you guess what emotion? You've heard me talking before, right? Can you guess which emotion? I'm now thinking of, yeah, that I'm going to start talking about in a moment. I just want to see, yeah. Uh, in fact, anyone who gets it right, I am going to give you a free mini course, right, that I don't normally give out to anybody for free, yeah. So, incentive, right? Guess it. What's this emotion? I'll give one clue, and it's a negative emotion that is really important to have a good relationship with as part of your project of creating your solo line business. 
including even if it's a spiritual business. So, what we got here? Okay, someone got it. The first person to get it wins. Okay, anger. Yes. Okay. To not first, only one person's getting it. Okay, maybe, maybe the second one, but that's it. Yeah, and I'm really, really glad that someone got it because it shows that people are listening to me. Because most people think, oh, if you're creating a spiritual business, you need to wash out all your anger. You need to become, you know. I don't even want to say a pussycat, but you need to become uh, very demure and, you know, this is not true, okay? Look, if you don't have a good relationship with your anger, what are you going to get? You're going to get flying into rages, you're going to get passive aggressive, you're going to get bitter, you're going to get resentful. This is all what happens when we don't have a good relationship with anger. Now, if you look at anger according to Chinese medicine, the meridian starts by the big toe, it travels up the leg and it travels up the body into the, the rib cage, right? And then it comes up inside the body and it actually goes into the eyes and the vision. So even our ability to physically see relates to our liver. However, there's also an element of our inner vision relates to the liver, right? Now, if you also look at this in terms of Chinese medicine, as the liver energy moves up, and if you imagine this liver energy is like, have you ever seen the little seed that literally grows through the concrete, through the pavement, right? And just comes up, yeah, like breaking through the stone, like crazy, right? Yeah, but this is the force of that energy, okay? And this energy, it contains all kinds of different things, yeah, but it's an upward movement of energy. It contains kindness, benevolence, forgiveness, gratitude, and it also contains anger because anger is us asserting ourselves. Okay, if you can't assert yourself, you're not going to do well in life. You're going to really have problems. You're going to go from being a victim to getting angry to just feeling disempowered and you're going to just... It's so important to really embrace and own your anger, right? Now, as the anger rises up, it rises up basically right through the groin. And we actually say in Chinese medicine, if a man... A man's, the power of a man's erection comes from the liver and the element of wood. Okay, so it's kind of like coming up from the feet, rising up like a vine growing, going through the sexual organs, the same. The liver has a lot to do with the womb, the, the menstrual process, the ovulation and everything like that, you know. So the, the energy rises up, right, through the sexual organs. It rises up into the liver, into the side, and it comes up into the eyes and the vision and i really see this kind of movement of this sexual energy hey al as being such an important part of um us being able to create and us being able to really see what it is our destiny to create because the liver it's also very very much about our destiny in the physical dimension our creativity in the physical dimension. The lungs are all about the ethereal and the spirit realm and so on, but the liver is about creating in the physical realm. And ultimately, this is here what we're talking about, our relationship with the physical realm, you know? And even when we say words like anger, words like kindness and so on and so forth, I think those words don't actually do justice to the energy that we're talking about, because we're talking here at the ability to say to someone, no, I don't agree with that. No, I don't like that. Uh, I want this, you know, I want here. Yeah. Does it, who here was told as a kid, I want doesn't get, were you told that? Give me a five in the chat. If you heard, I want doesn't get, right? I want to see if that's, Okay, now I can see people typing on here, which is cool. Who heard I want doesn't get? You know, when people talk about the 1%, right? The 1% and you have these, you know, rich families and so on, right? Do you think they're telling their kids I want doesn't get? They're telling their kids, go out and get what you want. Yeah, take what you want, you know? And the thing is, if only a tiny amount of the population have that attitude and the rest don't, it's really problematic, you know? 
what happens because so many of we can say the masses the 99 percent or whatever you want to call it or you know we're not connected to our vision we're not connected to our destiny we're not connected to the purpose and the reason why we are here on this planet imagine if every person whose destiny it was to be a cook or a chef had opened their own restaurant there was no mcdonald's there was no burger king there was no kfc nothing all we had was like gorgeous beautiful restaurants cooking amazing homemade healthy food that was really coming from people's hearts and souls imagine how different the world would be you know and we all have our destiny to create something to make something beautiful to give something to humanity but the fact is that society and our culture has taught us to just play small to limit ourselves not to dream not to look and think big and just to be afraid I mean, I went through situations when I was when I was um, a teenager, right? I was a bit of a rebellious teenager. So my mum and dad left me in more or less Ohio when I was like basically just turned 17 years old. OK, so they took me literally we're in America. I'm not even from America. They've left me in this part of America. OK, I was kind of with some people, but I was also kind of on my own. And they left me there for months, right? The idea being that I was going to come begging back, say, okay, I'm going to do everything that you're going to tell me to do. Well, that wasn't what happened, you know? And I refused to, you know, toe the line, so to speak. Um, but quite quickly, I started to figure out, you know, and in those days, when you're young yet, and you're not using a lot of common sense, you don't even know how to take care of yourself. You're doing, I was doing like kind of crazy stuff, ending up in crazy situations, you know? But one of the things that happened to me out of that was despite everything I did and all the stupid mistakes I did, the thing was, what happened was I survived and I didn't just survive, I flourished. I went back to England, I got into university, sure I had a bit of a wild time, went to lots of parties, you know, as you do when, you, when you're a teenager and so on, but I was okay, you know, I survived. And so often, like, I think that people that we think, you know, if we start branching out and creating bigger, you know, that we, something bad's going to happen, you know. And this, it still happens to me because I did go through some scary times when I was younger. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me. I had some scary times happen and I still sometimes find myself working through those and having just something come up and being like, wow that's just come up for me to deal with. But when I understand, you know, for example, like I like to invest a lot back in my business, you know, but sometimes you're investing a huge amount of money back in your business and you're like, ah, oh, shouldn't I be getting whatever different thing, buying this and that with, with that money, you know? What if I can't pay my rent because I've paid 10 grand for a new coach or something like that? But then, do you know what? Like there's actually, is always this little pot of money, right? That actually gives us what we need. You know, but when we don't have the power, because our anger is repressed and our sexuality is repressed. And the gentleman I was talking to that I just mentioned that, you know, I was talking to him and it was almost, it was almost, I don't want to say like a joke because I'm not, you know, I totally honor him, you know, where he's at. And I can relate a lot to what he was saying, which was probably why I was kind of almost half laughing at myself about things, how I'd sometimes done things and I'd sometimes made statements to myself like we can make statements like oh well you know my family didn't have businesses so how can I you know do that uh, uh, just there's so many statements right I'm sure you guys can think I mean I'd love to hear from the people who are watching um, what's a funny thing you were taught to say like even we get taught, what is it? Money does not grow on trees. I mean, it's crazy because money is literally made out of paper, which means it kind of does grow on trees, you know? And then when you look at it even deeper, it is literally constantly being just printed and printed and printed anyway. So it's not even like it's like a, a lump of gold. Even if it was a lump of gold, they can go get more of those out of the ground, you know? Um, 
but uh, yeah, coming into the relationship, and I'm going to say anger, what we think of as anger. And often when I talk to people about anger and people will say, uh, you know, they'll think, oh, who do I need to get angry at? Who do I need to shout at? Maybe throw a brick at or something like this. And the thing is, no, no. People think anger, it means you've got to express something. Sometimes I'll say to people, you know, I am so angry. And people will be like, you don't seem like you're angry. And it's like, okay, but I can hold the energy in my body. I've learned and I know how to hold the energy in my body. And I've learned how to transform that energy within my body. Because if you can't hold the energy within your body, easily, yeah, you can end up flying in rages. I used to do that a lot, yeah. Another thing is like states of passive aggression and so on and so forth, you know, uh, which happens when you're stagnating the energy into the body. When you get the energy into a state of flow within your body, it really starts like actually literally giving you energy and strength and creativity and vision to start growing and creating what you want. Um, so I'm really, really interested who's here. Like, does anybody have any questions about this? Um, <laughs> let me just check something. I wanted to see what did I promise to actually talk to you guys about? Sorry to, to, um, Yeah, okay, so I want to tell you as well, I'm going to be going really, really deep into this topic and I'm going to start looking, be looking at ways to grow your vision, okay? To grow your vision, to grow your dream and to really start, you know, and, and it's not so much for people who haven't created anything, they don't have their own thing that they're doing already, but if you've actually got your own thing that you're doing already and you want to find a way to create a deeper alignment with your soul, a deeper alignment with your whole system of energy and to start actually using the energy, the alchemy within your body to start growing your business to a really, really big place and pushing it further and further and further. Like this is super powerful stuff. Like some of my clients literally are like, you know, CEOs of quite big companies that use this stuff and find it like really, really effective. I also work with like, entrepreneurs with uh, actors as well as another interesting uh, bunch of people that that is is sort of attracted to what I do basically um, but this stuff is um, you know when we start actually learning and for me I never if I didn't start doing these practices and get in touch with my sexual energy and start having multiple orgasms, which we can think, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I just want to have multiple orgasms. And it's cool. Yeah. You want to have, you know, about Taoism, you know, about Mantichia, you want to have multiple orgasms. Why shouldn't you want to have multiple orgasms? It's like saying, I want to eat a plate full of blueberries. Of course I want to eat a plate full of blueberries. <laughs> who doesn't want to eat a plate full of blueberries and who doesn't want to have multiple orgasms? Right. But the fact is when you, when you start having multiple orgasms, it's like about having this shift in your consciousness and this shift in the whole way the energy is working because it means that to a certain extent, your energy system is at least starting to optimize when you start experiencing orgasms in your body and not just in the clitoris or just in the, in the uh, ejaculation, basically, okay? And when your body and the alchemy system within your body starts to activate what happens is it aligns you with your purpose and it aligns you with your uh um yeah with your destiny and you start seeing your dream of where will i actually be and where do i want to be that's really gonna make me feel like i'm in the right place for me and of course this is different from everybody everybody wants different things you know and i do see like as a conscious entrepreneur who knows a lot of other conscious entrepreneurs. I'm really inspired by the whole conscious entrepreneur movement because there's many people that are getting into this that have come from backgrounds where they are really like, they've come from backgrounds, family history of poverty, family history of suffering, family history of abuse. You know, there's many people whose families were literally enslaved in the past who are now becoming entrepreneurs and actually using this to basically be able to heal the ancestral and generational traumas that 
they carry within their body. And as they start healing these traumas within their body, it literally starts he healing back down the line of generations. And by the way, if people are thinking, well, only African-Americans were enslaved, you're very wrong. I mean, even in England, where we didn't particularly have black slaves, there were so many people were kept as slaves. So many white people were kept as slaves. Uh, many, many children were born and they were dumped on the street and they were taken and they were kept as slaves as well. Um, a lot of our ancestors were raped. A lot of our ancestors, you know, I mean, even not very long ago, the world was like an extremely, extremely brutal place. Even if we look just back into the Victorian eras, only like 150 years ago, you know, there were huge amounts of suffering, huge amounts of death, uh, just uh, disease. There was very, very cruel treatment of people, very, very cruel treatment of women, you know, and there's a kind of a buildup of all of this, um, I'm going to call it like it's disempowerment within our bodies that we need to alchemize and we need to heal because a lot of how the world is like going downhill now, a lot of this, it's actually due to all this unhealed trauma. You know, we can go and get, you know, oh, so-and-so is a bad person, this person's evil, so-and-so is a narcissist and all this and... It sounds good, and I'm not saying on a certain level that it doesn't exist, things like, you know, narcissism and sociopathy and so on, but ultimately, when we start looking and understanding, this is this like years and years and years and centuries of generational trauma. Like, I mean, my God, when we imagine like how many generations of people in Europe were put to death by the church, for example, over hundreds of years, I think it ended in the 1700s, or, you know, even later that people stopped you know, being killed as witches, for example, just accused of being a witch and just put to death. Um, all of this trauma is still existing within us. And I mean, another of the funny things, so it seems like nobody put there any of these beliefs, right? You know? So, or maybe I missed this wrong. No, no, no. Nobody's put any beliefs. I'm really interested in, are, is anything coming up for you guys about toxic beliefs you're holding on to about money, about abundance, about, you know, success? anything that was programmed into you that you want to release, put that into the chat because I think it's a powerful way to actually bring it into your attention and start alchemizing it, you know, for sure, right? But, um, um, but yeah, in any case, you know, another thing that they say is money does not buy you happiness. I mean, abject poverty does not buy anybody happiness, you know, either. If you go to, look, when the earthquake just happened in Turkey and one of my friends is there in Turkey, she was literally with some kids whose parents has just been killed and she's told me, what do I do? I don't say, oh, I wish them well. I send them some money because that's what they need. That's what they need to get out of this situation. And it's the same thing when we start to create abundance and wealth around ourselves and any of you who are watching this we're all capable of doing this to a very very large extent because there's actually a huge spiritual shift going on in the world now around money and around abundance and the whole way that people were negatively atta attracted to money both spending it and and receiving it you know this is a very very toxic trait that look, if if you're a working class person holding on to this whole I ideology, you think all oh, money isn't really good. I shouldn't get very much money. You're not any better than the really really greedy person taking all that money for themselves. Because if you didn't sit there with that disempowering belief, that person wouldn't be able to take all of that as well. We need to balance it out. We need to step in our power. And hey, isn't it easier to just sit there and go, oh, I'm a victim? Oh, all the rich people are messing up the world, oh, da da, whatever, 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 right? It's so much easier to say that than to actually stand up and be powerful, yeah? And stand up with that liver energy and go, yeah, I have this vision, I wanna do this, I wanna create this, I wanna be this, and do you know what? I don't care, like, people will, yeah? And um, unfortunately, the fact is, when you start rising up, yeah, there's people that are gonna, you know, give you negative energy and give you bad energy. There's also people that will be inspired by you and they'll see what you're doing and they'll start actually rising up themselves and you'll start drawing people up with you, you know. And then the voices of the people that don't like what you're doing are going to, you know, 
die down and it's all going to basically be worth it because you're going to see ultimately you've healed yourself, you know, you've healed your family. And when we actually start balancing out the wealth and balancing out the power, you know, it's going to make the world a lot more of an equal place. So, I want to see, is there any more questions that are coming up? Are people uh, confused with what I'm saying? Um, if you've enjoyed this, you can give me a, a, a like or a heart in the chat. Um, drop me a hi to tell me that you've seen this. Let me know what you think. Um, I do feel... Al, being retired, already accomplished my goals. What now? I mean, I honestly think there's always new steps. You know, there's always things we can do. I mean, when I was first working with um, acupuncture, right? When I'd first uh, finished acupuncture and I started to study, uh, sorry, and I started to give the first people treatments and I was giving all these old people treatments. And what I noticed was I was getting these people around 60, 65 years old who'd suddenly developed these health problems, right? Hey, Tristan. And the thing was, what was interesting was it seemed they all like retired and six months later I had some terrible health problem. And it's kind of like, oh, you retire. Okay, look, if you retire and you are, um, you got something to, to do and you got a purpose and so on, yeah, it's all well and good, right, yeah? I mean, I've thought about this and I want to be doing what I love, yeah, when I'm old. I don't want to be like, you know, of course, look, if you're doing a certain type of a job, retirement can be a blessing in a sense, but this is also then an opportunity to start actually thinking, well, what do I want to create? What do I want to make? What do I want to give to the world now? You know, because you retire, what, 65, you know, 70, 80, especially if you're doing Tao practices, yeah, you're practically a spring chicken still at 70 or 80 years old anyways, you know? Um, and just finding, finding things you can do that give you meaning in life and giving joy in life. These are... These are important. Yeah, I travel to keep busy. I like to have, I like to travel and I like to have an occupation that allows me to. Ah, okay. What can we do to get in deeper in touch with our liver energy and our vision? Let's do a little exercise around this. Okay. Thank you for the question. Great question. Okay. Um, so. The liver energy, Billy, you should be able to answer it. Yeah, tell me what is the color and the element of the liver energy? Anyone knows? Hey, hello, hello everyone. Okay, right. Green, okay, and the liver is the wood element. The wood element lives in the liver and the the color is green, okay? And basically the color of the energy of the liver is green, okay? And the liver gives us the, the drive to create in the physical dimension whatever we are here to create. You know, it might be, I'm gonna have it, make an invention, I'm gonna start a company, I'm gonna bake a cake, I'm gonna climb Mount Everest, I'm gonna run a marathon right? I'm going to go train every three day, three, three times a week. All these things are liver. Liver is everything to do with the physical dimension. Okay. I want a house. I want a car. You know, this is all liver stuff. Okay. So when we imagine the liver, it's all about the destiny in the physical dimension. Now, you know, if you probably know, believe about the emotions, right? We talk about the positive emotions as being kindness, Forgiveness, gratitude, fairness, uh, sorry, not gratitude, benevolence, benevolence, not fairness, um, as being the positive emotions, right? And positive emotions are great because they tell us, hey, you're doing good, yeah. But, you know, imagine if you got a mentor, right? Imagine you got a mentor, or you got a coach, and you paid this coach like $10,000, right? And all the coach was saying is, hey, you're doing really good. You're doing fine. You're doing good. You're doing good. Well, are you pissed off that you'd wasted your money just to get told you're doing good? right? Okay, because negative feedback is really, really important. And the more that you want to do well in life and go further in life, 
the more that you need to have negative feedback because the negative feedback is what gives us the the opportunity for growth here now anger is a kind of a negative feedback and i would say in our culture uniquely in our culture we experience a certain quality to that energy of anger right so it can be like i want to smack you on the face yeah i want to swear at you and call you nasty names or i'm so passive aggressive i'm going to gossip behind your back i'm going to try and sabotage you there's all these different expressions right of anger which can be you know not necessarily the healthiest forms of anger right that same energy could me be going like no get out my house no, don't touch me. Um, you know, it's definitely a no energy and the no energy is really, really important. It, 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 it might be, you know, get away from what I'm creating. Being able to put up boundaries, being able to assert ourselves in a healthy way, you know? And most of us, to some degree or other, have probably been programmed that to actually stand up and say, what we want or say no, we might get this feeling of, oh, I just said no, oh my God. You know, we get programmed. I mean, I remember, oh my God, even this was another thing as a kid. We were literally told no is a bad word. Imagine that. When I think back on it, I'm like, my God, this is just insane that we were actually told no is a bad word. No is such an important word. But many people don't grow up feeling empowered and happy and healthy in their no. And learning to really, really feel comfortable in the no. I will honestly tell you that I went through this journey where I'd never had an orgasm. I became multi-orgasmic like in this one crazy week, but that was the week I really learned to say no, where I started having this huge transformation in my energy. Um, so I think like the energy of assertiveness, and when we're assertive, when we're feeling good in the no, we get much more confident, you know? Um, but ultimately, you know, that raging feeling, that angry feeling, it is like a little kid screaming. It's like, in a sense, our inner child, you know, screaming. And if you see a little kid on the floor that's screaming and crying, I mean, I hope you would pick the kid up and hug it and give it love and comfort it, right? You're not going to go slap the kid. I hope not. But it's kind of what a lot of us are doing to each to ourselves and kind of each other as well. You know, the amount of times I hear people say, oh, I sense some anger there, as if it's like something wrong with sensing anger, whether there's anger, whether there's not, you know. I mean, I think a lot of different interactions can have a little bit of anger energy in it. It's not necessarily a bad thing or a toxic thing, right? I think it's good to have a little sprinkle of all the different emotions in the different interactions. You know, if you're, we actually say in Chinese medicine, if there's lack of wood, which is never able to be angry, that's not good. Yeah, if there's excess of wood, it's not good. You know, lack of fire, excess of fire, any of these in excess, because ultimately the, the anger, it brings us up. The sadness, it brings us down. Actually, if we're repressing anger a lot and then we've got the sadness sinking down and we just get this heavy, sad, unenergized, tired feeling because all the energy is going down and nothing's standing up again, you know, and then we're just depressed and we're just sad and getting in touch with the anger and just being like, hey, you know what? I'm angry. I'm feeling this. I'm cool about it. I'm allowing my body to absorb this energy and actually get em empowered by it and realizing Anger is not a toxic emotion. It's only ener energies and emotions that are blocked, that are toxic, you know, stagnant, toxic, you know, deficiency and excess is not a good thing as well. We want them all in balance. We want the energy coming up, the anger coming up, but then we need the sadness coming down to balance out the anger. It's kind of like the spiritual force and, and the worldly force, both going like this at the same time, but we want them to be balanced with each other. You know, the same way the kidneys push us forward, you know, but we don't want too much forward because then we also have the, the fire element in the heart, which is kind of flickering up all this love and the earth element just keeping us nicely balanced in the center. And when all of these different forces are moving around in harmony, we basically become like a balanced and an integrated person. But I'm going to go into way more detail about this next week. 
Okay. Okay. I want to put for you guys here the sign up for the, um, does it allow me to, to add this? Huh? The sign up for next week, next week for the 13th. Oh, that's funny. Why? A place to put a comment. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It does. Okay. Yeah. So that's the sign up for next week. I've just stuck it in the chat. Hopefully it's just appeared, right? Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool guys. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's the sign up for the event next week. And I'll be going into more detail about how all this works. And, uh, it's going to be like a three day event, right? So we can really start getting like some techniques and systems together where we can really be taking like our taking our vision and really really tuning into how we can actually be creating this into something bigger and grander and greater so 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 nice to connect with everybody here especially to the people who haven't been to my live events before and Hoping you all enjoy the rest of your day or your evening. So sending lots of love out. Have a good evening. Bye.